Hi. And welcome. Welcome. Welcome to Earth. Good day. <laughs> welcome to the big show. All right, what's up, everybody? It's Mr. A, and we're talking today about Section 2.2, which is a discussion of domain and range a little bit more, but with graphs and also function operations. Here's homework number seven. Go ahead and pause and write that down if you need to. So let's take a look first at de determining domain and range. And we've discussed this a little bit, how domain are your input values or your X values, and the range is the output or the Y values. So... For example, this, this problem here asks us to find the domain. So remember when we talked about domain, we're looking for the x values that might make this function undefined. And um, in this graph here, it doesn't look like it's undefined anywhere. But it does look like it occurs on an interval, right? The book purposely stopped it. We moved from, we moved from this point right here on x to this point over here. So what are those x values? That will determine what the domain is. So the domain looks like it's running from this x value, which is 0, right? So we'll write it in this, uh, in this notation, the x values, all the x values such that it looks like x is occurring between 0 and this value here, which corresponds to 4 pi, OK? So we're going from 0 to 4 pi. So what would that look like? Well, it's all the x values that are going to be greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 4 pi. Okay. So those are our domain values. Now remember, as we look at this graph, we don't see anywhere that it's, uh, it loses its continuity. We don't see anywhere that, it, uh, that there's an asymptote, right, that it makes it undefined. So it looks to me like all the x values work, but in this case, we're going from the interval on the graph 0 to 4 pi, so that's how we would write it, okay? Uh, let's see. Function operations. So function operations are just the basic four operations in math, add, subtract, multiply, divide, but applied to functions. Uh, the first will deal with simple substitution, right? We've got f of x, and we have an input value here, which is negative 2. And we want to uh, just find out what, what is the value of f of, neg f of negative 2, excuse me. Or in other words, what's the y value when my x value is negative 2? So let's plug negative 2 in to each one of these x values. Just simple substitution. We'll take negative 2 to the third power minus 3 times negative 2 squared plus 4 times negative 2 minus 1. And then from there, we'll just simplify. Negative 2 to the third is negative 8. We've got negative 3 times positive 4 minus 8 minus 1. So it's negative 8 minus 12 minus 8 minus 1. Looks to me like negative 29. So in other words, when my x value is negative 2, the corresponding y value, or the output value, is negative 29. Okay, easy enough. Well, what happens if I want to test negative x as my input value. Now remember, this is almost what uh, we were looking at when we were testing y value or y axis symmetry. Right? What we would do is we would take all the x's and turn them into negative x to see if the graph could sustain that change in x and still have the same y value. Okay? Well, if we just go ahead and plug right in, we'll get negative x to the third power minus 3 times negative x squared plus, mess that up, 4 times negative x minus 1. Okay, and just some simple work there, we'll get negative x to the third, right, because I have a negative here. When I raise it to an odd power, the negative stays, just like on the previous problem, the negative stayed with the 8. So this is, uh, then this becomes negative 3x squared minus 4x minus 1. Okay, so that's the value of f of negative x. Now is this an even function? Answer is no because when I, or not even I should say, does this have y-axis symmetry? Uh, no because when I substitute in negative x, it does not look, this resulting function does not look the same as the original function. So remember subbing negative x we're testing for y-value symmetry in there and what could be a shortcut? Uh, 
to look at that test. Well, instead of doing all this substitution here in the middle, what I can do is just get rid of all this and just look for a couple clues in the original function. Meaning if you notice, all of the exponents that were odd, right, that's like x to the first, all the odd exponents changed sign, right? So all that I have to do is change the sign on the odd exponents and keep the sign on the ones with the even exponents. And that's a little bit easier than subbing in. Okay, well what if I want to add together? So it will look in notation similar to this, and all that's saying f plus g is just add f of x and g of x together. So this shouldn't be too bad. We're just going to add these two functions. It's going to look like 2x minus 1 plus 3x plus 2, and that is f of x plus g of x. So just adding, I'm going to just going to get my like terms together. I'll have 5x, the negative 1 plus 2, is positive 1 or plus 1. And that is f of x plus g of x. Okay, easy stuff, simple stuff, right? Just a little bit of notation alert. Here's subtraction. You got to be careful with subtraction because we're going to start off with 2x minus 1, which is f of g. And we're going to subtract out g of x. But remember, we have to subtract the whole thing. So I want to include g of x in parentheses. Right? If I don't include in parentheses g of x, then it looks like I'm only subtracting 3x. But I have, to subtract, uh, I have to subtract the whole function. So I'll get 2x minus 1, I'll distribute, get minus 3x, and then minus 2. And then from here I can just get my like terms. 2 minus 3 is negative x, negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3, and that is f of x subtract g of x. Okay, uh, next one, let's work on multiplication. So we'll take f of x times g of x. And all that we're going to do is something, again, that we've done before, which is multiply these two binomials together. 2x minus 1 times 3x plus 2. And you remember this looks a lot like uh, what you might have learned as FOIL or kind of an extension of distributive property. 2x times 3x is 6x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x 3x times negative 1 is negative 3x. Negative 1 times 2 is just negative 2. And now if I gather my like terms, I'll have 6x squared. 4 minus 3 is 1x minus 2. And that is f of x times g of x. Cool? Cool. Okay, last one, I'm going to change the, the functions, but we're and we're also going to work on a different operation, which is division. So if I take f of x divided by, this time I'll write it with a division sign, g of x, that's going to look like 2x over x minus 1 divided by x over x minus 1. And if you guys remember any of the things that we learned about uh, division of fractions, we don't really divide by that second fraction, we just multiply by the reciprocal of that second fraction. Oy. So if you see the x minus 1's are going to divide out, and the x's will divide out, and you'll just be left with 2. Well, that kind of resolved very nicely, although not all of them will. And uh, if you want to get into some extra credit, you can look at page 69, 85, 90, and 91, sort of some, uh, excuse me, sort of some extension problems. All right, have a good one, guys. We'll see you.